In this video, we will solve the Schrodinger equation of the helium atom by the variational method. So first, the Schrodinger equation of the helium atom is H psi equals E psi. H consists of the kinetic energy operators of the two electrons and the two attraction terms and the electron-electron repulsion. There's no analytical solution to this Schrodinger equation because those two electrons correlate in the electron-electron repulsion term and cannot be separated. There's no way to separate the equations for the two electrons. The wave function of the two electron system must obey this quantum mechanical postulate 6. Wave function that describes a many electron system must change sign under the exchange of two electrons. The mathematical form is easy. If you have two electrons, one and two, then psi one two equals negative psi two one. Therefore, we have to construct this two electron anti-symmetric wave function using a determinant to, for, in, to enforce positive six. Over here, this is the uh, determinant. 1 over square root of uh, 2 factorial is the normalization factor. Uh, phi 1 and phi 2 are the uh, 1 electron orbitals occupied by the electrons. And 1, 2 are the coordinates, including the x, y, z coordinates and also the electron spin coordinates of the two electrons. V1 is the ys orbital, this is the spatial orbital, times the spin function alpha. And uh, V2 is uh, also the spatial atomic orbital, ys orbital, times the beta spin. Both V1 and V2 are called spin orbitals. And this psi s is called a uh, spatial orbital. This psi 1s can be estimated to be an exponential function e to the power of negative times z effective times r. z effective is the effective nuclear charge felt by electron 1 and electron 2. So now we can expand psi 1, 2 to be this. There are three terms. One is the normalization factor. Y is the spatial orbital of these two electrons, and Y is the spin function of the two electrons. If you look at the spin function of the two electrons, this is anti-symmetric. If you swap 1 and 2, the sign of this spin function changes. But how do we determine the value of this effective nuclear charge? In general chemistry, we learned that in a helium atom, the effective nuclear charge filled by electron 1 is between 1 and 2. The reason is electron 1 fills the plus 2 positive charge on the nucleus and is also shielded by electron 2. The shielding is not 100%. So it's going to be plus 2 minus a number between 0 and 1. So how do we get this number? We we'll have to use the variational principle. This says the expectation value of energy obtained using a trial function is always greater than or equal to the exact energy. So only if your trial function happens to be the exact function and then your trial energy will be equal to the exact energy. The mathematical form of the variational principle is very easy. This is how we use the postulate form to get the trial energy given the trial function. And the trial energy is always, I'm sorry, higher than the exact energy. So only when the trial function is equal to the exact function, and then we'll see this trial energy is equal to the exact energy. But why is this useful? This is useful in that no matter what kind of trial function we use, 
the trial energy is always higher than the exact energy. Therefore, we can somehow use different trial functions and see which one gives us the lowest trial energy. And then we know that trial function is the closest to the exact function, and the corresponding trial energy is the closest to the exact energy. However, it's tedious to just try different trial functions. So there's a systematic way of optimizing the trial function, which is to uh, make a trial function that contains some variables and will simply minimize the trial energy with respect to those variables inside the trial function. So naturally, this effective charge may be considered as a variable to be optimized. And uh, this is called the variation method. Uh, in the wiki page, it says the variational method consists of choosing a trial wave function that depends on parameters. And then we'll just minimize this trial energy with respect to those parameters until we find the lowest possible trial energy. For the heat atom, we have the expression of trial energy given the trial function. So this is the complex conjugate of the trial function. This is the trial function. And same here and here. In the middle, we have the Hamiltonian. So what we need to do is, again, to make a trial function that contains two, contains one parameter here, the effective nuclear charge felt by electron 1 and by electron 2. It happens that both electrons occupy the 1s orbital. So the effective nuclear charge, the field, is the same. A C is uh, part of the normalization factor from here. Uh, it's from here. Uh, it's because uh, this exponential function by itself is not normalized. So I'm assuming C times this is normalized. So again, c squared over the square root of 2 factorial is not important. This is simply the normalization factor. And anyway, if you plug in this psi into the expectation value of the trial energy, this normalization factor appears twice on top and twice on the bottom. And they will cancel. And also, the integral of the spin functions will cancel both on top and on the bottom, only because inside this Hamiltonian operator, there's nothing about the electron spin. So therefore, on top, you'll see the integral of the squared modulus of the spin function. On the bottom, you'll see the same integral of the squared modulus of this wave function. They will cancel. So really, we we'll just uh, need to uh, minimize the trial energy here. Uh, with respect to just one parameter, C effective, which is the nuclear effective nuclear charge. Now we replace this C effective with zeta for simplicity, and we just need to minimize this E trial with respect to zeta by setting the first derivative of E trial with respect to zeta to zero. And then we just plug in this uh, expression of E trial and the uh, size is this. Uh, the division rule in calculus states that if the differential of f over g is zero, then f prime g equals f g prime. And then, therefore, we have this uh, uh, similarly very complicated equation, but really it's just the first derivative of the top times the bottom equals the top times the first derivative of the bottom. Uh, this equation, however looking complicated, contains only one variable, zeta. What about the other variables? Okay, we are integrating this whole thing with respect to d tau 1 and d tau 2. 
D tau 1 and D tau 2 are the volume elements of the electron and electron 2. Therefore, all those other variables are eliminated. And what about the spin functions? The integral of the spin functions cancel each other. And then, by solving this uh, linear equation that contains only one variable zeta, we will determine the value of zeta. Once we have the value of zeta, we we'll plug it back into this equation. Okay, since we know zeta, we just need to evaluate this two integrals again. We have this E trial. And this E trial is the lowest possible value of the trial energy for this trial function here. Okay, of course you can use different expressions for the trial function. But this trial function gives us a reasonable estimate of the exact wave function. And also, this wave function of the two electrons obeys quantum mechanical possibility 6 by having this part anti-symmetric, this part symmetric. And in the end, if you do all this, uh, you will get the value of zeta, which is 1.69. And you saw this value in general chemistry. The effective nuclear charge of the electrons in the helium atom is 1.69.